Hello and welcome to Geography 102, World Regional Geography. My name is John Lesh and I'm the professor for this course. The image on the screen in front of you is the front page of the syllabus and the photos on the screen reflect globalization, a key theme in this course. Uh, these photos were taken between Provincetown and Eastham, Massachusetts, which are located on Cape Cod. You'll see here that these pictures reflect different aspects of globalization. The picture in the middle is a sign that um, asks visitors, asks um, residents, asks people on the street to help keep the population safe because of a global pandemic. Now we're, we're all impacted, we're all aware of what's going on with COVID-19, but we also in this course recognize that it's part of globalization, the diffusion of disease around the world. As uh, human geographers, we look at the different aspects of disease. Where did it begin? How did it spread? What are the results to the different communities and populations around the world? The other images on this um, page reflect globalization in another sense, in the sense of migration and immigration. The um, image on the bottom left is of the Pilgrim Monument. In 1620, the Pilgrims arrived in Provincetown, Massachusetts. They arrived um, from England via the Netherlands, and when they arrived in the United States, they brought with them their culture. And they, they also established the first legal um, charter first form of, of modern government in the United States. Above that is a restaurant called Carew, which is located in East Ham, Massachusetts. And this restaurant reflects South African um, immigration to the United States. The image on the top right is a Jamaican bed and breakfast. In this part of the country, there are a number of Jamaicans that have followed a well-established immigration corridor from the Caribbean to eastern Massachusetts. And on the bottom right is a, is a grocery store in Delhi called Day's Market. Day's is an anglicized um, form of Diaz, which was um, a common Portuguese name here in the uh, 19th century. So these images, something that are quite common in our cultural landscape, also reflect a key theme to this course, which is globalization. In this overview, we're going to look at how to contact me how to access Blackboard, and to, how to better understand the course expectations. Um, my email address is listed here on the screen, jlesh at Towson.edu. This is the best way to, to get in touch with me. Um, I am responsive, so if you email me, I will get back to you. The best time to reach me is between 10 a.m. and noon, Monday through Friday. These are my online office hours. But I am also uh, responsive between 9.30 a.m. and 4 p.m. Monday through Friday. During the evenings um, and on the weekends, I do check my email, I do reply, but it's more sporadic. So if you need to get in touch with me, I encourage you to reach out during the business day um, between 10 a.m. and noon if it's something you need an instant um, answer on. But again, I am responsive and I will get back in touch with you. Um, I also want you to know that uh, we can set up a Zoom meeting and I often um, believe that a Zoom meeting is a better way to address in-depth questions or multiple questions. Uh, the syllabus is available. I encourage you to read it as soon as possible. Um, the syllabus, again, it establishes the course expectations, the course requirements, and importantly, the course calendar. Um, it's important that in a five-week course you hit the ground running. Um, while it's not terribly intense, it doesn't allow for a great deal of catch-up. So if you fall behind in a five-week course, it's like falling behind multiple weeks in a, in a semester-long course. So read the syllabus, um, make sure that you create your own calendar to help guide you through the course. All of the um, readings are provided and found on Blackboard. So the, the textbook we use by Finlayson is um, it's provided in a PDF form, and also um, her chapters are relatively brief, so as she introduces you to different parts of the world and different geographic concepts, I've included supplementary readings on topics such as immigration, language, religion, that'll help build on the um, overview that Finlayson provides. Blackboard is also important because it's the site of your grades, it's where you're going to track your progress, and it's also where the instructions are found for our different um, assessments. Speaking of assessments, the course is broken down into three units, so about a week and a half per unit. Um, each unit 
includes chapter assignments. These chapter assignments are questions based directly upon the readings. So they are the least challenging, they are untimed, and they are to uh, make sure that you're covering the assigned readings. Now, these questions come in, in multiple choice, um, true, false, sometimes matching or fill in the blank, but they're basic reading comprehension questions. If you give yourself time, you should do well on these. What is a little more challenging are our reaction essays, and there will be one reaction essay in Unit 2 and one reaction essay in Unit 3. The reaction essays allow students to take a deeper dive into the course concepts and material. The reaction essays will be based on uh, current events or, or a, a recent report that was released that tie to course concepts. So I will post instructions on Blackboard when we get to Unit 2 for you to complete your first reaction essay. Again, this is um, these types of evaluations allow students to uh, create a deeper application, um, show me what you're learning, and relate that to a current event. With my courses, whether it's Geography 102 um, or any of my um, intro courses or upper level courses, I do require students to make out of class connections. I think that's critically important that um, students understand we're not learning in isolation. The topics that we cover in a university course are applicable outside of the classroom or outside of the online learning environment. And then the third type of evaluation uh, falls under field reports. And these field reports are the most challenging, but I'm also going to add the most enjoyable aspect of the course. The field reports allow students to enter their communities and make direct course connections with the areas where they live. Um, in Unit 1, students will look at how immigration impacts the local cultural landscape to topics that will be covered in Unit 1. So all of us are familiar with certain restaurants, certain businesses that reflect um, populations or cultures from different parts of the world. In this class we're going to take a little bit of a deeper look at that and see how, again, these course concepts, globalization, culture, immigration, cultural landscapes, reflect, um, or I'm sorry, are reflected in your local communities. We're going to switch gears here a bit and take a look at our Blackboard site. When you enter the Blackboard site, you'll go to Announcements. So all of the emails I send to the class will also be posted in announcements for at least a couple days. Um, so if, if you miss something in your inbox, you could go here to make sure that you're not falling behind on any course related information. Uh, the area where all of our assignments are in, and instructions are located is under course content. And right now you're, you're viewing the getting started video, which is available on the Blackboard site in addition to a Word doc that outlines an approach to the class. Very important again, read the syllabus. Just to reiterate, make sure that you understand the expectations, the requirements, the um, and, and most importantly the course calendar so that you know when your deadlines are, are coming up. The Finlayson text is located here. Again, it's in PDF. The text isn't terribly long. It's, it's a couple hundred pages. It introduces you again to key regions of the world and key geographic concepts. And then each week you'll have a supplementary, supplementary reading, and those will be found in here. Um, so Unit 1 required readings. You'll have your Finlayson reading, which is listed on the syllabus. And then also listed on the syllabus, you'll have um, place attachment. You'll have Griner Chapter 2, Globalization and Culture. So all of the readings um, are found on Blackboard, either directly within the Finlayson text or in order by unit in this folder here, required readings not found in Finlayson. The um, unit lectures are found in here. So unit one lectures will be available at the start of the course. And we'll have a unit one overview, which will be um, a recording lecture and then you'll be able to move through the lecture slides. Again the lecture slides tie to the required readings both Finlayson and the supplemental readings and um, introduce different examples, reiterate key themes, and help you focus on um, some of the, the, the greater course outcomes. Chapter assignments are found here by unit so unit one assignments are going to pop up. Um, the first assignment that the students will complete is a 10 question syllabus assignment. 
Again, give you a little extra incentive to, to review the syllabus, keep the syllabus open, read through, complete the assignment. Each assignment that follows will include what's on the assignment. So for assignment number two, Finlayson chapter one, place attachment article, again, both found on Blackboard, and then the corresponding lecture. So these are untimed, untimed assignments. I encourage you to read in advance, but you can have your readings open as you complete the assignments. The Reaction essays will also be found in the chapter assignments folder. Again, beginning in unit two, the reaction essays will post. And then the final folder is field reports. The instructions for field report number one are here. The submission form is available. Uh, the, these later submissions will show up on your screen later on in the semester. Uh, the citation requirements, I am a stickler when it comes to citations, so I expect them to be in the proper form. It's a good way of, of showing that extra effort in polishing your paper. The field reports require personal photos. The photos that are used in the reports must be taken explicitly for the reports. I'm not interested in old photos. I'm not interested in borrowed photos. Students using old or borrowed photos will not receive credit. Um, you could use borrowed photos in addition to your personal photos, and this could be helpful if you're trying to show that the change in an environment over time, if you're comparing something um, from today with something in the past, that would be a time you could use a borrowed photo, but the borrowed photos can't be used in, in lieu of or instead of your personal photos. Um, the grade rubric is posted here, and then I've also put in an example paper to help you better understand how to format your paper in a visual form. So please make sure you take some time to go through the Blackboard site as you get started. I encourage you uh, right away to review the Getting Started document, to review the syllabus, and uh, make sure that you are comfortable working through the Blackboard site. It's pretty basic. Um, it, it follows the flow of the week with the readings, the lecture, and then the assignments. But again, if you have questions, let me know. Students always ask me, some general terms how to do well in this course and what I always say is treat it like a job um, you are taking this course for five weeks and the expectation is that it's a part-time job for those five weeks now if you have a job you need to show up you need to do what you're supposed to do you can't just take time off and then expect um, to return to your job and everything be okay so treat this like a part-time job commit the, the the daily hours commit the weekly hours and you'll do fine be responsible for your work, and if you have questions, ask. As you look ahead over the next five weeks, manage your time wisely. Create a calendar. Make sure that you don't miss deadlines. The chapter assignments and deadlines are all listed in the syllabus. Um, they, they occur in regularly, um, or they're, they're listed in regularly occurring deadlines, so you have the information you need. Now, if you miss a chapter assignment, it's not going to make it's not going to break your grade for the semester, but if you miss multiple assignments and you start falling behind, that can create some issues. Make sure that you are reading all of the information. Again, this is it's, it's a self-led course, so the information you need is there, but if you're reading and you're preparing and you don't have the answer you need, let me know. I am available. Uh, the, Within the course, within all my courses, I encourage students to make it relevant in the evaluations through the, the current event uh, reaction essays and the field reports. Highlight that uh, personal connection, but make sure that you're not learning this in isolation. You're not trying to memorize terms. You're not trying to um, think of this as, as abstract. What we're going to talk about in this course is, is information that's happening in the world around you and much of this is directly affecting your day-to-day -day life. And it should go without saying, but do your best. Make sure that whatever you turn in, whatever assignment has your name on it, is what you want me to see. This is your work, it's your name, make sure that you're proud of whatever it is you submit. So we'll, we'll leave off here, but if you have questions let me know. Otherwise, I will be in touch shortly, and good, good luck as we get this course started.